Cover One Crew, Chris Chow's back again. Hope everybody's great. I'm doing awesome because it is a game day, baby. We got another one. It is Thursday night football, but we're doing the same old, same old. It is Boomer Bust, Miles Sanders versus Damian Pierce. Who do we like more this week? Who will perform better this week? Little start sit comparison action for y'all. I will also be given the game prediction and start sit on the rest of the players in this contest. So do me that favor and smash that like button. Drop your comments on who you got a problem starting this week. I'll definitely get back to you. But let's get into the good stuff on Thursday Night Football. You know, the best part about player comparison is understanding which one is going to do better, especially when both talents have been playing extremely well. This season, we'll start off with my guy, Miles Sanders. Always been a fan of Miles going back to the Penn days. You got to love his skill set. Finally, he's picking up his game once again this week or this year, I should say. Seven games so far this season, 114 attempts, almost 600 yards, 530, or 563, a nice 4.9 on the average, five rushing touchdowns. He has not been utilized in the pass game as much as I would like. 11 for 42 and zero touchdowns for Miles. You could imagine if his numbers in the pass game were that much better, his numbers would be that much greater in fantasy football. The Eagles rushing attack right now, 149.6 rush uh, uh, yards per game. And, I mean, that has a lot to do with Jalen uh, Hurts as well. We know this. Miles Sanders has been benefiting as well from Jalen Hurts' uh, improved passing attack, but it does not preclude uh, Jalen Hurts from taking off and running the rock like he has been doing. A nice 4.3 on the average and 14 rushing scores. So you see five touchdowns for Miles. He's not even 50% of the rushing touchdown uh, milestone so far for the Eagles this season. But this offense is predicated upon the ground game. This past week, we did see Jalen Hurts air it out a little bit more, which was positive. As for eight-man fronts uh, for Miles Sanders this season, he only sees eight-man fronts in 21.93% of rushing attempts this season. That is good stuff. That means teams are still respecting the pass quite a bit, and Miles does not see the eight-man front as frequently as we think. This is also benefiting his rushing aptitude and his rushing numbers this year as opposed to previous seasons. It doesn't hurt that a guy like A.J. Brown, grown as man, you know what I'm saying, is on the field as well, making teams be honest with their safety stack in the box. So this has also been a huge benefit to this rushing attack for the Eagles this season as well. Efficiency rates, he is ranked eighth right now as 3.32. He is doing very well when he's got the ball in his hand, likely giving you the high-end efficiency we are looking for. Top 10 efficiency rate is always a big possibility. Positive, and Miles Sanders is showing it every single week. A uh, majority of the season, even if he's not finding his way into the end zone, he's still putting up a good level of yardage for your fantasy club this year. The TLOS, the uh, total time spent behind the line of scrimmage, 24th rank, 2.81. That is a big one. This is a big statistic that I find in running backs, especially in fantasy football. You start seeing their productivity and how they are behind the line. How much dancing are they doing? How long does it take them to hit that burst, the initial burst? How many sidesteps they taking? That goes all into account to time behind the line of scrimmage. 24th rank is not the best, and this numbers could increase if he does up that to, say, like a 2.6. We could see Miles Sanders' uh, efficiency in yards per carry even go higher if he does that, but I mean, and it is what it is. You got to take the numbers for what they are. As for Miles Sanders' counterpart in this contest, that is the rookie. I don't want to say sensation, but he's been doing very well. Damian Pierce. And admittedly, okay, I was a little bit low on this man's game coming into the NFL because we knew he was a bulldozer, and I just was suspect on the fact of how long would his body hold up in a Houston offense that does not necessarily possess a top-flight pass attack. So this is the interesting thing. Before we dive into his stats, let's dive into those eight-man fronts. He does not see, man, 21.49 eight-man fronts for uh, Damian Pierce when he is in the backfield, which is quite uh, surprising, where, like I said, it was 21.93 for a Miles Sanders. So that's 
to have a huge benefit in why the success is happening for a Damian Pierce this season. It is surprising, but I think that Brandon Cooks does more than enough for this offense to keep the defense honest, keep the safeties pulled back, and this is why Damian Pierce does not see as heavy uh, eight-man fronts as I would have suspected. But for the statistics, this season so far, seven for 121, seven contests for 121 attempts, 539 yards, 4.5 on the average, and three rushing scores. And the impressive aspect of this is the 20 receptions for 98 yards and one touchdown. Yes, a lot of this is check down work. Yes, a lot of this is garbage time productivity. But this is all big positives for fantasy football that you cannot get away from. And Damian Pierce has definitely inflated his numbers based in that passing attack. Okay, while Myers, Miles Sanders has five touchdowns total, we got Pierce at four. One of them coming in the past game where Miles had none. So you got to understand where the productivity is definitely coming from. But Damian Pierce has definitely worked with more or worked with less and achieved much more in my opinion, and I think that's where the, the positivity is definitely for a Damian Pierce. The Texans rushing attack right now this season, just under 100 yards, 92.4 rush yards per game, a decent 4.1 yards per carry, and three rushing touchdowns, all coming from a Damian Pierce, so you see there's not much uh, utilization from any other running back on this team. He's basically doing it alone, hence was my fear coming into the season that how long would his body hold up? Yes, coming from college, he didn't have a, a huge workload from Florida, from the Gators. So, I mean, his body still is relatively, you know, uh, unscathed and has lots of tread on these tires, so to speak. Efficiency rates for a Damian Pierce is 3.81. He does drop down to the 31st rank. So he's just not, you know, producing at top levels where his rushes, uh, you know, should produce even better statistics where I said the efficiency for Miles Sanders was 3.32. A 3.81 does drop him quite significantly down the list of rank of efficiency rates. If he does clean this up, even by a 10%, you're going to see him pop way higher up this list, and he likely could have even higher numbers than a Miles Sanders does possess at this point. Tie by the line of scrimmage, he's the 44th rank at 2.96, where Sanders was 24th rank at 2.81. So you can see just even with the, the little difference in number achievement here, the rank does drop quite significantly. So there's too much dancing, too much thinking. Find the hole and bang it through the hole. That's what you need to do a little Damian Pierce style. But I mean, he's carrying people. If you're talking about, you know, uh, break tackles or ta uh, yards after tackle, Damian Pierce is definitely one of the leaders in the pack in the NFL this season. So both these individuals likely going to have decent games. You got to lean just because the, the Philadelphia Eagles defense is that much better. But let's talk a little start sit for these Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Hurts has been a man possessed this season. He looks absolutely phenomenal. And I mean, again, here was an individual that I criticized quite a bit based on his past passing aptitude but the Eagles he's got him uh, going to a undefeated record but the caveat is we got to say strength of schedule they have played some subpar teams outside of the, those Dallas Cowboys and even then we could question how good are those Dallas Cowboys overall but I mean this uh, this schedule for the Philadelphia Eagles it legit outside of them just having a team let down they could legit go undefeated this season because the strength of schedule is very weak overall but I will not take that away from how well these Eagles have played they've come together as a club the passing is starting to come from a Jalen Hurts, which is why I was critical on the man before. I wanted to see the passing aptitude improved on his game. He's starting to figure it out. It doesn't help, or it doesn't uh, not help, uh, for lack of a better term, having A.J. Brown on the field because he is a grown man, and he just he's going to pull it in. We saw what happened last game. Look what the NFL did. He scores three touchdowns and dominates the Steelers secondary, and they go make him take a PED test. This is how good he is right now on the field. I'm sure that P test came clean. NFL, shame on on you, man, for testing the man after having a good game. But nevertheless, that's semantics I will not go into. Stud star for Jalen Hurts every single week. He is booming every single week, almost at the 200-point mark. He should crack that this week on Thursday Night Football. Miles Sanders, like I said, low-risk play for me. He's playing extremely well. You can't hate what he is doing on the field. They're giving him the touches. Even on a lesser workload last week, he saved the day with a touchdown scored. So you're hoping that they're going to run the rock just a little bit more in this contest. Feed him in the pass game just a little bit more. Highly unlikely because 
because Jalen Hurts, uh, you know, those passes are basically saved for the wide receivers in A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith overall and Dallas Goddard. So, I mean, Miles is not really needed in the past game. So hopefully his rushing upside and potential for scoring touchdowns will happen again against a weaker defense in the Houston Texans. I mean, we got Kenny Gainwell, but I mean, he's not doing much. So you're not even looking in his direction. We got A.J. Brown once again. A stud start, man. You got to think that they are figuring this thing out in the past game. You're firing him up anyway, but I think he's going to have a very good day. Yes, Derek Stingley, the rookie defensive back, is very, very good, but he has been, uh, you know, beatable this season. There are plays mixed in that he is very fantastic, and others where you're like, oh, he's still a rookie and he's learning. So A.J. Brown, definite, obviously, stud star for me this week. Low risk play again for Devonta Smith. He's just the perfect complement to an A.J. Brown and this pass game. Wherever the ball's thrown in his direction, he's going to make it. He runs the short intermediate routes very, very well, and he's got some good red zone appeal. He just needs a touchdown. He's going to still get those five catches per game. He's doing very well this season as your wide receiver two or three, likely your three, and he's doing a very, uh, you know, admirable job in that respect as well. Definitely fire up a Devontae Smith versus these Houston Texans. Quiz Watkins is that deep threat guy you're not looking in his direction, much like a Kenny Gainwell. There's just not enough passes to go around to feed all these guys. If Quez does hit, it's a it's usually just a fluke play, or no, I shouldn't say fluke play. It's a it's a design play, but it's a fluke to predict because you just don't know when it's going to happen. Is how I should put that. Dallas Goddard again, low risk play. You're firing up him every single week too because he's just elite level. I mean, we can hope to see the statistics increase with touchdowns scored, but the tight end position is always so hard to predict. But Dallas Goddard is one of these most consistent guys because he gets a lot of targets get share in that respect as well these Houston Texans let's pray for him let's pray for him prayers up for these Houston Texans this week because Davis Mills is a high risk he is not gonna be you know looking good against this incredible front seven of the Philadelphia Eagles not to mention how well that Bradbury and Slay have been playing on the defensive secondary it's just gonna be a tough day all around if Mills gets any kind of point productivity I gotta believe it's gonna be in uh, maybe the opening drive maybe he does with good play calls he moves the ball just a little bit but I foresee a a lot of interceptions, a lot of turnovers. I see them, uh, you know, trailing for uh, the entire contest uh, to the point, you know, maybe garbage time productivity is your only savior. High risk play for Davis Mills. He's going to be sacked a lot as well. That front seven is ridiculous in Philadelphia. Damian Pierce, you got to put the mid-level risk on him just because this front seven is so good. Yet Damian Pierce is one of the best in the league right now at uh, yards after the tackle. It's just, it's so hard to trust, but you're going to play him because your draft capital was likely very high on him. And especially with all the bye weeks we have, you're not sitting Damian Pierce this week. Just temper the expectations because getting to 10 points, you're going to be biting your fingernails off until that fourth quarter because it's likely when he's going to find either the end zone or get that PPR upside like we're seeing on the checkdowns with those 20 receptions that he does have on the season. Sexy Rexy Burkhead. I mean, you're not playing. <laughs> what else can I say? I'm just putting them here for show because it's nice. You like to include players that are on the team, but Rex, I mean, it's it's Pierce's backfield now. You got Brandon Cooks. He's a little bit, you know, angry and, uh, you know, upset that he did not get traded from this club. The team said that they were looking for buyers. His contract was just too high and nobody was willing to eat that cost. So I wonder what Brandon Cooks were going to see on the field this week, hence the mid-level risk. Is he going to be angry and, and uh, you know, uh, disengaged is the best word I should should say because I mean he wanted out man this was a situation where he could have gone to a team that could have utilized the services with a better quarterback better system and moving into the postseason now he's got to endure the rest of the year now on these Houston Texans like he has all season long I I really I'm putting a mid-level risk on this I don't want to play him this week I really don't I think Bradbury and Slay are just that good but if you have no choice, I completely understand, but it is against my recommendation. Even if he hits, that's going to be – I'll eat it. If he hits, I'll eat it. I'll just put it that way because Bradbury and Slayer are just too good, and Brandon Cooks just has not been uh, you know, intrigued in this offense as of late. Philip Dorsett will be taking over for the injured Nico Collins. High-level risk play for me as well. For him, Chris Moore and Brevin Jordan, who seems to be taking over the tight end spot here in Houston, but they still do uh, rotate all three of their uh, tight ends with 
with OJ Howard, Akins, and now Bre Brevin Jordan. I think Brevin Jordan is the more talented tight end out of the group right now. It is very important that they start getting him touches. It is good for his progression. He is getting some level of target share. So if we're thinking on bank on on you know high risk level plays in deeper leagues, Brevin Jordan's not a bad one because he could see some target share late in the contest. Like I said in garbage time, Chris Moore maybe he seems to be getting some chemistry with the TD upside, but I do not like any of these wide receivers in this contest. If I had to choose and it was with a you know gun to my head, I'm playing Damian Pierce and I'll maybe maybe start Brandon Cooks if I got no better options. But I'm definitely looking for better options down the road. As for the contest prediction on Thursday Night Football, man, Vegas is going all out. They were minus 13 on the spread, favored these Eagles, and I grudgingly took it. I do not like taking big spreads like this ever. I am 7-1, and one, by the way, on uh, uh, Thursday Night Football, or uh, yeah, 7-1 and one as we enter Week 9. So I've been hitting, and this one was one probably one of the more difficult ones I've had to digest as I went through all the statistics. But I do believe minus 13 is definitely doable, especially after the beatdown they gave those Pittsburgh Steelers. Houston just doesn't have the ponies to, you know, keep up, even if they do start the game a little bit tight, and it is a short week. I understand that's where it could foil and fail, but I got the Eagles. They're just playing too darn well. They seem to be a very well-coached club at this point. Yes, they could have a letdown in this contest. That's the only problem. Could they keep up with their domination that they did have from these uh, the Steelers game this past week? We shall see. But again, it's a very uh, big if. Man, I, I think Jalen Hurts is out to prove everybody that he is the passing quarterback, and they will likely uh, air it out once again to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Hopefully, Miles gets a lot of groundwork. So the only saving grace is garbage time, but I got the Eagles at 30-10 to 10 on Thursday Night Football covering that minus 13. Let's go get that money, and I guess fly, Eagles, fly. So there you have it. That is Boomer Bust, Miles Sanders versus Damian Pierce. Who do you like better? I got Miles this week a little bit better than a Damian Pierce, but you're going to be starting both of them because, I mean, running backs are so hard to find at this point, especially with all the bye weeks. You're firing them both of them up, but Miles Sanders, to me, is going to be the guy that's going to beat out the point productivity this week. It's, it'll be interesting. I mean, you can't hate on what Damian Pierce is doing. He's been very, very solid, but... Those Houston Texans are in for a world of hurt versus this Philadelphia Eagles defense that is just lights out good. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your starts and questions, or who do you pick, Miles or Pierce this week? Who's going to do better? And we'll see you next time. I am out.